Good morning, everybody. Today, I am going to bring you a build that isn't mine. That's right. Usually, I come up with and create my own character builds. However, this time, I wanted to do two things. First, I wanted to re-examine ranged combat. You see, ranged combat is something that I've talked about I don't really enjoy that much. I find that there's an issue with the general desyncing of arrow shots in this game, so when you shoot your bow, it's too bad, even though you wanted to hit the monster, no rolls happen, and your bow disappears, flying into a portal somewhere never to be seen again. However, it's no secret that ranged characters, specifically bows and shuriken throwers, are doing crazy damage right now. And so I really wanted to get a chance to see what on earth does it feel like. What does it feel like to play one of these characters once you're fully geared and juiced and you jump into a bit of combat to see what kind of damage you can really push out? Now this also is not my character build because I traditionally don't play ranged characters. Usually when I like to build character builds, I stick to the things I know best. But since I've generally avoided ranged characters, I didn't want to take a chance at trying to build the best version when first I know I probably wouldn't do the greatest job because I wouldn't put in the right amount of effort. But when following a build guide, well, there's already items set out for you, no matter how many raids you have to do to get them. So after burning all of my wonderful runes that I've been storing up and a lot of threads, I bring you Bow Rogue. Not made by me, but made by Ying from Kyber. I will put a link to the build that I used below if you would like to follow it as well. Now bear in mind, the link that I'm going to give you is not the most up-to-date link. The most up-to-date link will be the top link. The bottom link will be the one that I used because I played this character before the update came through. The author of this build has taken a very large amount of time and effort to parse out and do a bunch of math about many different character builds. So if you are curious about the state of ranged combat, please take a look through some of the resources below and have yourself a good time figuring out what would be the best character for you based on the amount of investment you really want to make. So let's get into it. How good is Bow Rogue? And the answer is like 100,000 damage. That's what you do, like 100,000 damage. You shoot a monster, boom, 100,000 damage. It's pretty cool to see a gigantic number like that, like one big single six digit number. And you might ask yourself how exactly you get there. And really the answer is min-maxing. Getting as many pieces of gear as possible, as much range power, as much double shot, sneak attack damage, critical multipliers, and you can get your character to do some crazy numbers. However, while this character did phenomenal damage at the end game, and I mean just absolutely insane, once you get to sit on a single target, you're blowing them up instantaneously. I enjoy fighting Doom Reapers on my Warlock, but I really love fighting Doom Reapers on this character. However, it has a steep price to pay. The first price is leveling. I think that bow characters are not very good at leveling in comparison to a lot of other characters. The Horizon Walker does not grant that much damage in Heroics, since a lot of the effects that you get in Horizon Walker are heavily amplified by epic effects and abilities, specifically all of the physical damage scaling you get out of Horizon Walker. This means that usually one of the best ways to level up quickly is to use Arcane Archer since it gives you a huge amount of flat damage that doesn't rely on critical hits, meaning you can chunk through monsters fairly easily and quickly during the leveling process. However, for the purpose of this build, I did not do that because I just kind of followed along with the Enhancement Tree, which I would never recommend. Always, if you can, just put points into the Arcane Archer Tree. It's going to make your life a lot better. However, during the leveling process, you're going to encounter a lot of monsters. Monsters in big packs, monsters that are moving, monsters that are aggroed onto other people. And in a lot of these cases, you're going to find your bow shots just disappearing, not able to actually hit the targets that you're shooting at. If a monster is moving, and heaven forbid you're moving, or even sometimes when you're not, your shots will just disappear. And as you shoot at targets, you should notice nothing happening. No attack roll. I call this desync, as the client side and the server side are not talking to each other properly, and for some reason, the arrow just does not go where it's supposed to go. This happens constantly. So when you're playing at the end game in a coordinated group, with the tank keeping the monsters far away from you so you can easily snipe from downrange, it's not a problem. However, during the leveling process, you never know who you're going to be with, and especially if you're by yourself, once you get surrounded by monsters, you're going to immediately notice that your character has really no way to fight all the monsters that are there because half the time you're going to be getting desynced. 
There are a few ways around this, however, that I would like to recommend. The first is just getting Fan of Knives from Vistani Knife Fighter for the leveling process. It seems weird to pick up Fan of Knives, however, it does excellent damage in an area of effect, assuming you have some range power. And fortunately, bows get a hilarious amount of range power in the heroic leveling process, both from Horizon Walker as well as from Rapid Shot, which gives you bonus range power while you wield a bow. Or is that many shot? I don't know, one of the two. Either way, you're going to have both of them, and you're going to have a lot of range power, which is going to make your fan of Knives hit really hard during the leveling process, and very much helps out for those situations where you get quickly surrounded. However, the build that I was using didn't want to use any Arcane Archer late game, so I didn't use it during the leveling process, and I just found if I couldn't sneak attack a monster, I just wasn't really doing a lot of damage. Now, some people might be wondering why you want to go so much rogue. Well, the real answer is the sneak attack damage, which is unbelievably good, doing over 2,000 damage usually per shot. However, it's important to note that during the leveling process, it is not quite this good since you don't have the range power to really scale it, and while at endgame you might have areas where other players are actually interacting with the monsters and pulling them away from you so you don't have aggro on all of them, in heroics that's not always the case. Additionally, you only get the ability to use your sneak attack at a high range at level 30, whereas until then you're basically limited to 30 feet for the majority of the game. This means if a monster's all the way down a hallway or at a fair distance from you, you don't get any sneak attacks. So again, really this character goes crazy at 30, and until then, it is a long slog. This character, being a 13 rogue, 6 ranger, 1 barbarian, also doesn't have any healing in any capacity. Yes, you do take use magic device, and yes, you can use wands and scrolls, but trust me, when you're leveling through the level process and you don't have a lot of healing amplification, it can take a devilish amount of time to heal yourself, especially if you want to do Reaper mode. This is the perfect type of character to bring in a static group where they really just want to have somebody doing a lot of damage and doing traps at the same time, and you know that there's going to be somebody else responsible for the healing. As a solo character, probably not my first pick. However, the important thing to remember about this character is while I'm talking a lot about the leveling process, that's not the selling point. This is not a fast leveling character. This is not the be-all, end-all, quickly leveling, super easy process character. Bo is the slow run all the way to get there. You know, somebody who's basically setting up all their equipment, takes a million miles to get where they need to go, but then eventually, by the time they finally get to that level 30, you get that gear on, oh my goodness, you just start tearing things apart. And I didn't even go for the best gear, because I don't have enough scales for the red dragon scale armor, and I didn't feel like farming it out. No, no, I went for something that was, like, pretty good, and my damage was off the charts. Now, the question then becomes, is this character fun? So I like to perform a lot of roles. I like to be able to heal others, usually as an off skill. I usually like to have some crowd control in my build. As an off skill, I usually like to have some damage if I can, and have some cool abilities in a pinch where I can save my team. This character cannot do any of that. It shoots people real good. So if everyone's alive, you're in the clear. If everyone dies, you better kill those monsters before they kill you, because you're on the clock at that moment. The character, fortunately, is also very defensive and tanky, getting access to displacement anytime you use many shot. And on top of that, also having access to improved uncanny dodge and a standing dodge of somewhere around 30%, your character can stay alive for a long time in R10, surprisingly, even with low physical resistance rating and health. Now a question that might come up here when I talk about the fact that when you get surrounded and you have no area of effect and there's tons of monsters, is what about Scattershot at a Horizon Walker? I've said it before, and I'll say it again. When it was on Lemania, it didn't work. When it came out first, it didn't work. And now, many, many, many months later, it still does not work. Scattershot, I don't think is a very good ability. Every time I've tried to use it, I hit at most two targets. Maybe in once in a blue moon, you would hit three, but generally it's two targets, even when there's many targets to actually hit. And it was almost always better just to use many shot to blow one monster away so you can move on to the next one. I do not recommend using Scattershot ever. Please don't use this ability. Now, if you want to try out Bow Rogue for yourself and really start crunching through the numbers, then follow one of the newer builds that are below that are better than the build I'm about to show you because it's old and out of date. But if you want to still listen to an old man talk about an old out of date build, let me pass it over to me with the build. Bo Bo Bo, if you want to be shooting people in the face with a bow, then you can look no further than this build to get you started. Or as I said in the free section, there's also going to be a link in the description to a more up-to-date version of this build. But this one is Rogue 13, Ranger 6, Barbarian 1. 
This is not fully decked out with all the bells and whistles, so my dexterity could still be pushed up higher. But this is kind of like your general scope. Very low physical and magical defenses, but that's okay, because this character is all about just, like, not getting hit anyway. You've got a reasonable amount of dodge, which I personally pump up to the cap with Reaper mode, because I have Reaper points. And then I can get it even higher. And your armor class being 119 right now, which goes up again in Reaper mode, uh, is actually still quite strong. Um, makes it so monsters aren't hitting you all the time. Because I am a rogue, I do have the ability to uh, do all the traps. So I've got disable device, search, open lock, and stuff that can go up in quests. And then on top of that, you also have listen and spot, which then allows you to use the, um, not Horizon Walker, the Jurati Champion attacks that allow you to lock down monsters. Now, it's kind of hard to go through the feats, but basically, you want to take all the range feats. Rapid shot, quick drop, precise shot, point blank shot, many shot, brute precise shot. You get a bunch of these from actually being a ranger. So you get uh, precise shot, rapid shot, and many shot from just being a ranger. So you only have to take point blank and improve precise shot. Additionally, on top of this, uh, you're going to be taking some uh, martial feats and some rogue feats. You got to make sure you take precision, a weapon focus range for the extra hit and ranged damage from range power. Uh, improve critical range weapons and then from rogue you also get opportunist with the rogue and you also get improved evasion from your rogue special feats uh, the bonus feats you get as you get higher level so this character pretty much never needs to worry about actual incoming uh, range damage on top of that we also use a shadow dancer which means you don't fail reflex saves on a one and with my reflex saves of 88 out of reaper and it goes up in reaper uh, this character never needs to worry about it i basically always make my saves and i'm pretty much immune to area effect damage which is kind of cool as you move into epics, uh, this character grabs Overwhelming Critical, Improved Sneak Attack, Combat Archery, and Watchful Eye. Combat Archery was buffed uh, last year, last summer, to make it so that it grants an extra plus one critical multiplier with bows, means, meaning it's very, very, very good to use with any type of bow character. Improved Sneak Attack gives you more Sneak Attack dice, Overwhelming Critical is just, of course, good on all characters, and Watchful Eye, while not being the best feat in the game because it's a utility, uh, thanks to Shroudy Champion, this actually gives uh, double shot as well. And then your legendary feat is Scion of the Ethereal Plane, with your epic destiny feats being double shot, pierce silver, and harbinger of chaos. You got the other pierces already, so pierce silver is just nice to have. Harbinger of chaos just does a little bit of extra damage, and double shot, of course, is double shot. Now, as far as spells go from Ranger, the only two I used were Ram's Might and Jump. Um, the other ones didn't seem to matter. And honestly, I actually couldn't cast Jump most of the time because my Jump was always high enough. Uh, halflings can actually get bonuses to Jump, and uh, you just get so many bonuses from other places and never really needed to worry about it. It was always so high. And of course, Ram's Might here. Now, uh, in terms of my actual enhancement tree, let's take a look at this. This one's a little bit confusing. Basically, uh, Horizon Walker is the play here. You want Horizon Walker, you want to be... Um, getting everything out of here, all the good stuff, grabbing some of the attacks, grabbing the uh, constant uh, protection from evil, because this makes you immune to many different compulsions, such as like the command spell, you basically become immune to it, which is nice. Uh, on top of that, you grab the effect where you when you use uh, scatter shot or many shot, you get displacement, the hunter's focus expertise, a bunch of good stuff. I'm gonna talk about the things you avoid taking. So first of all, I didn't take Walker's Guidance. Cool ability when you play with your friends, uh, but this build is about killing people and not helping people, so you do not take this. Uh, Corner of the Quarry is a reasonably useful attack, um, but it's not good enough to consider using all the time because immobilizing your target, usually a monster is dying in one shot, so you don't need to worry about using Corner of the Quarry here um, to like eliminate targets. And then the upgrade where you can banish the Quarry over it does extra damage, again, it's nice to have, but you already have to spend a bunch of extra points to get these attacks, and it's just not worth it in comparison to other stuff. And then Scattershot, this attack doesn't work. Um, I find that almost every single time I've tried to use this attack, uh, you get two shots off most of the time if you're surrounded by three targets. It basically doesn't function at all, and I don't like it. So don't take it, it doesn't work. If you want an area of effect attack while leveling, just put your points into Fan of Knives early. So you know maybe don't put the points in like the Halfling Tree until later. Uh, put take fan of knives and just use this as an area of effect attack during the leveling process because this attack is garbage um, however we're halfling because this character the halfling means you're shorter so you actually have better angles when you're shooting at targets one of the main issues when you're actually shooting at something say as a wolf as a bow character is that your shots will go down into the ground meaning that if you have improved precise shot let you penetrate targets you're always going to be shooting at targets um you know, at an angle downwards into the ground, whereas a halfling I shoot straight across. On top of that, halflings also grant saving throws, which is nice, dexterity, and sneak attack damage, all of which come up. Important note, this character has 82 points. If you don't have 82 points, you just take points out of the halfling tree, so you just drop some sneak attack and other things. 
Uh, Deepwood Stalker is used here because you really want to get a uh, sniper shot, and I also personally really like aimed shot. I think aimed shot's fantastic as it's just a good attack that gives you archer's focus stacks, which gets you a little bit faster on gaining these extra stacks. Vistani Night Fighter might seem confusing, but you get a uh, double shot here from having the core. You also get some a little bit of defense, an extra favored enemy. Your character, while being a ranger, only gets two favored enemies. However, you do get to pick up one favored enemy here. You get to pick up another favored enemy of the Fey, or sorry, evil outsider here, and favored enemy Fey in Shroddy Champion. And the way that favored enemies work is that the more of them you have, the more damage you deal to all of your favored enemies. So it's very nice. You get haste boost, which is the best damage action boost in the entire video game, which is good to have, and deflect arrows which is insanely useful all the time, especially since this character is, again, super squishy. So if I get shot once, I basically just instant die. But if I'm playing on R10, I can deflect an arrow, so I don't have to worry about it. And if they shoot me once, that means I can shoot them five times with many shots. Now, the other things I spent points on here that I personally think are very good, Thief Acrobat for the extra attack, uh, movement speed. The one Barbarian level is for 10% movement speed and nothing else. So with this, uh, since I'm 13 Rogue, I get 23% extra movement speed, making you very fast generally while running around. So you're up to 153% just normally. And Tempest Ranger here, this seems weird why you would put points in a Tempest, but this just reduces the cooldown of Deflect Arrows. So it actually procs every three seconds instead of every uh, six, which is really nice. And then in terms of the epic destinies, uh, this character is currently rocking uh, Shroudy Champion, Shadow Dancer, and Dreadnought. If you only have 52 points, the base amount of points, you just drop the points in Dreadnought. I wouldn't drop any of this other stuff because it's way too good. Um, this character currently running, I guess you could probably drop the points in live, I guess, because I did to put extra points in here. You don't need to take this. And instead, at least grab one point in Fearless for the uh, range power. But still... Uh, Shroudy Champion out here giving you all of the good offensive stats. You got double shot. You got double shot. You got this Hunt's End where you just press a button and it makes your next attack basically kill somebody. And you want to use Hunt's End with Deepwood Stalker for Sniper Shot because you go Hunt's End into Sniper Shot and you hit people for over 100,000 damage, which is how you do that consistently. You want to do that every single time when you can. Although just remember Hunt's End has an 8 second cooldown. Sniper Shot is a 6 second cooldown. So just make sure you're keeping and working in that delay. You up fully upgrade your Prism Stance, which is important. And then up in the Tier 5 here, you're grabbing Lore of the Hunt for the Crit Multi. You're grabbing Feywild Attunement for the um, extra dodge for your Wilderness Lore feats. Um, and to be always considered in point-blank shot range. This is essential because your Sneak Attack damage, which is massive on this build. It does about 2,000 damage extra sh per shot of just Sneak Attack damage. Your um, point blank shot range is really low because you don't have anything that helps with this. So before level 30, you are very rarely sneak attacking monsters because you're just always out of range. Once you hit level 30, you're sneak attacking everything all the time, which is fantastic. And then inexorable advance is just a billion damage. You press this button and you feel like you can take down anything. So it's very, very cool. Shadow Dancer gives you sneak attack damage from the cores, as well as this darkest luck ability, so you don't fail reflex saves on a one. You also get uh, Dimension Door, which is insanely useful. Extra trapping skills. My character is... Like, I don't have any good past lives for trapping on this character. Um, I don't have a lot of intelligence on this character. So this is very, very helpful for dealing with that. Sneak attack dice, and then, of course, extra double shot. Because you're trying to pick up as much double shot as possible. And then Dreadnought, just grabbing Fearless. And then I grabbed the extra push to the line. Because this character is all about doing damage. So when I action boost haste, which I'm doing all the time, I get even more um, ability scores. So my intel or dexterity is just a little bit higher, so I get a little bit more damage. Now, as far as the uh, equipment goes, I'm going to go through each item here because this is actually a fully complete build. This is not the upper echelon of items for this build. And as I said before, uh, you should probably be using one of the more updated versions that I will link below. Although, I'll, if you if you just want to play this one, um, it's not better. It's just the one that I did. So I will have a link to this one as well. Uh, for weapon, you're going ahead and using the Chaos Bow. It's one of the better bows in the game because it's got pretty much everything you want. Elasticity for the extra crit multi on 19 or 20. Extra attack speed. It's got fetters of unreality, so you're causing monsters to get uh, vulnerability stacking. It's quite good. Now, this character runs the uh, Wildwood set. So you're running the chess piece Wildwood vest, as well as the Helm of the Final Watcher and the Wildwood gauntlets. Um, now... There are a lot of effects here that I do augment in uh, because I change up a couple pieces and there's a lot of augments here to really make your character strong, so keep that in mind. Augments I don't have. I don't have a Litany of the Dead augment, which would be helpful in this character build. If you happen to have one kicking around, you can throw it in here for plus two to all your stats, which I don't have, but would be definitely recommended. I'm using a Diamond of Vitality 20 for 20 hit points because I don't have Vitality. I don't have Deadly anywhere, so I use a Topaz of Damage to get my Deadly. And also in my gloves, I don't have a, um, I don't have any Range Power items, so I use a Topaz of Range Power as well, which can be bought from the new vendor, Randall Lyric. 
Uh, this character is also currently running the Thorn Boots, which gives wisdom as well as some of the natural armor bonus, and Bloody Thorns, which gives you um, a bonus to your damage based on your... Um, what was it? Wilderness Lore Feats, which I have thanks to Barbarian and Ranger. And this also gives me the Topaz of Swiftness so I can move fast. I don't have the full 20% or 15% swiftness because I get 20% attack speed from my bow, so I don't care. I'm also running the Lionheart Ring, which seems confusing, but this grants Insightful Armor Piercing, which I want, Insightful Constitution, which I want, and Action Boost Boost, because I want to get as many action boosts as possible, so I'm always attacking with the extra action speed, and then Diamond of Festive Constitution here as well. I do not have the Summer Set. My belt is the Dire Wolf Belt. Again, I don't have the Winter Set either. This is why this character is very um, fragile and brittle, because the only two sets that I'm currently running are the uh, Wall Watch set here, as well as the Raven Eye set, which I'll get to in a little bit. Darwolf Belt for the Insightful Seeker and Deception. Just really good stats, as well as a Sapphire of Resistance, so more damage here. My cloak is actually Charun, Grand Burden of Fury. There's two reasons for this. First, you need an artifact in this build. And second, this grants Armor Piercing, as well as Quality Seeker. I do not need the Strength or the Raging Strength. Now, you might ask yourself why you would use this artifact over another. And the reason is that because this build, this item really only gives you Armor Piercing and Quality Seeker, it's very flexible. It's not really integral to the character build. So if you want to get spell absorption, say from a item like the, um, uh, I can't remember what the name of the cloak is, not the Mantle of the World Shaper, but whatever, the cloak from Giant Hold that gives you spell absorption or Mantle of the World Shaper works or whatever it is you have, um, that item can go in here really easily as a swap without you losing too much. The jeweled cloak, thank you. And then you can just swap it back in combat. Now, to go along with this, uh, we've also got the Wildwood Wrists here. This also comes from another raid with a Diamond of Festive Dexterity in it because it grants the Insightful and Quality Deception. So you have Deception, Insightful, and Quality Deception, as well as Dexterity and a Double Shot. Then we're also using the Legendary String of Ears for two reasons. One, this grants Dodge and Parrying, both fantastic stats I can get anywhere else. The Quality Wisdom is nice because Extra Wisdom means I have more... Um, skills, and then more Listen and Spot with Exceptional Prudent Skills bonus. Again, Listen and Spot are relevant for this attack right here, Pin, which gives you an upgrade called, called Auto's Whistlery, which either immobilizes or makes foes dance based on your Spot and Listen checks, so you actually need Spot and Listen in this build, and you can use it all the time to lock people down. It's very good. Then we use the Raven's Sight Goggles, which grants Insightful Wisdom on them, Accuracy and True, uh, true Seeing. You don't need the Accuracy, but the True Seeing and the Insightful Wisdom are fine, and I've got a Diamond of Listen in here. But you mostly want it for the Raven's Eye Set, which grants Attack, da attack and Damage, Critical Confirmation and Damage, and Sneak Attack and Sneak Attack Damage. These are very small bonuses, you guys. Remember, this plus three, these are totally tiny numbers. But they add up to a giant number, which is why you hit for 100,000 damage. You need every incremental bonus. Now, I don't have the other piece of the Raven set, because this is the only good piece of the Raven set. So, I'm using a Legendary Gem of Many Facets. This is probably the most expensive item out of all of these items, um, because to get it, what you need is you have to get a Legendary Gem of Many Facets, and then roll it until you actually get the Legendary Raven's Eye set on it. Once you have that, then you can craft it, and I put Insightful Dexterity, Spell Saves, and Parrying in here. Did I craft Parrying, and there was already Parrying here? Well, that's a mistake. I'm sure it gets fixed somewhere else. Anyway, and then there's also a Diamond of Constitution for my Constitution. Now, this build originally was supposed to use the Ring of Prowess. However, I just put a ranged Topaz um, augment here, as well as a Topaz of Damage. So I didn't actually need the Ring of Prowess. So I decided to use the Bound Elemental Ring of Acid, since this grants Alchemical Earth Attunement, which adds about, um, what, 300 damage per shot for the first shot, going stacking up to three times for a total of 900 damage per shot very quickly, which is really, really nice. On top of that, you'll also notice that I don't have any trapping gear. That's because I have augmented all of my trapping stats. So search, disable device, and open lock are all put in here as diamonds, which is, again, very expensive, but what are you going to do? And last but not least, Epic Purifying Quiver. Every ranged character in the game, so that it should basically be using this, where it makes it so while you're wearing this item, ammunition five for your main hand, deal blunt damage, which is just useful for skeletons and all sorts of nonsense. So this gear set is hard to come by and expensive, but there are easier sets that I'll link to that don't involve as much stuff. But as I said, uh, you can go in tiers. You can go with one set, then you can move on to the next one that's a little bit more expensive. And by expensive, I mean time consuming. You gotta run raids. You gotta get threads so you can reroll your gem in many facets and hope for the right one. So it takes some time and there's a process, but you'll eventually get there. Anyways, that's basically all I have to say about this character build. Um, Again, in my opinion, I think that bow characters really shine and excel at level 30 when you can kind of just stand still and shoot bosses. Um, however, 
I think that these characters are some of the most painful things to level, and I don't see myself playing a bow character for a long time until they fix the desync issue where your character just misses when you shoot. Um, so great, big thanks to uh, Ying Wan from Kyber, or as known as Carpon on the forums, whose builds I'm linking to. Uh, again, I did not make this build, I just followed it, and uh, they are they did a fantastic job of comparing a lot of different ranged characters and keep up on that. So if that's something you want to do and you want to be the absolute most meta you can and have the best character build possible, uh, when it comes to ranged characters, as long as you don't mind a terrible leveling experience, you can have fun with that one. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, watch my next YouTube video uh, soon, which will be coming out about something that I don't know yet because I'm not future me. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.